anymore. But good morning, everyone. You know, it's my pleasure to stand here as the mayor and the municipality of Chatham-Kent. You know, on behalf of the council, I want to welcome you to our community, especially to our convention conference center, which we have here. It's something that council started, started to change, made a change. We needed a convention conference center better than the old armories we used to have. And one of the things is we have this nice brand new building that we enjoy, which we're welcome to host guests. Because one of the things by hosting guests to this community is that we can educate you. And you know, one of the goals is to steal your hearts. Because that's our goal. We want you to come back, not just for the conference, but for vacation time. So it is my pleasure to be a part of today with the symposium that is being held which is very important for us as, as we move forward about educating each other, but most of all, gather information to make change. You know, your experience has brought to the table a number of initiatives, and I'll to address a few of those. But I want to talk a little bit about the diverse community. You know, you've heard about the Underground Railroad. Well, you know, you're going to get the experience. It's not the trials and tra trails that they followed back then, but it's the experience. Just placing your heart and soul in that, that era and to ring the bell of freedom or to sit in Uncle Tom's cabin and look at the artifacts that are there. Or whether it's in South Buxton to realize what has gone on and the changes and how the people that came to, that country, to our country got away from freedom and made sure that the freedoms they enjoy understood that they had a responsibility to change. You know, that's one of the great things. But also about the history that is also here. It's about, and I was always told we like sweaty bodies here, so don't take it the wrong way. Well, we do like sweaty bodies. And you know, if you've got a little bit of time, you might want to take uh, through the trails that go through our community, or you might even want to participate in our fitness parks that we have. Yeah, it's not just about the swing or the teeter-totter or the slide. It's also about a little bit of exercise. And one of the nice parts about our, our fitness park is that we got a lot more people participating in them and utilizing. You know, you'll get to quickly see why we love Chatham-Kent. It's a great community. We get more sunshine than everybody else. And trust me, that's Environment Canada that says that, not me. And some from the public health, you know, say too much sun is not good. But let me tell you, I love the sun. But, you know, it's a great place to work, live, and play. And, you know, the nice part about it, you're not breaking the bank in order to do it. Because cost of living is low here, but the quality of life is second to none. And I'm sure each of your communities will say the same. But we believe that by demonstrating that. You know, you're going to see historical Buxton to, uh, through a tour you are going to see how people changed the landscape, went from slavery and bringing it in. The Underground Railroad was an organization that led thousands of slaves to freedom in the early and mid-1800s. In modern times, we were shocked by, the, by slavery that, uh, that occurred in a century ago. What changes? Well, you know, changes are always difficult. And those who come from rural Ontario understand change is not always easy. We're pretty stuck in our ways. But change is important. And change does happen in our community. Whether it's what Will, Reverend William King, or whether it's Johan, uh, I'm gonna say Uncle Tom's Cabin because as soon as I say the name, you're not gonna know. But you know Uncle Tom's Cabin because it's in the books. And where, whether it's Mary Ann Shad, Carrie, the journalist who took on and making sure that you had the rights to freedoms, it's the struggles they had and the legal rights that they had in order to make sure that people knew they had a responsibility, but freedom come with a price, and the price is of making sure you had social justice in mind. There are organizations that came together through leadership. And if you don't remember that part, we all enjoy health care, Medicare today. Take a look at Tommy Douglas and what Tommy Douglas did to Canada, reshaping and providing a Medicare system that we all enjoy today. And I think those are historical parts that we must reflect to the next generation. Because the people in this room are leaders. Leaders require change. We're not stagnant. We don't sit still. And it's about how do we make a progressive community that has a social balance of social justice. You know, whether you work in the government sector, the nonprofit sector, or the business sector, it's about the quality of life that unites us all that we want to bring. You're going to see that today 
and through the leadership cabinet we developed here. Through the cabinet is about the independence we've worked all these years. Now it's about breaking the silos down. It's about how do we work together to, to create a community that we all cherish. Because if we make sure that the priorities that our council is set out with, with jobs, a healthier community, you want to make sure that you implement a strategy that everybody will participate. Not only government, but non-government. Businesses. Everybody needs a healthier life. We have created a healthier life, we create a better business environment. When we create a business, better business environment, we create a competitive cooperation. You know, the topics you are addressing over the conference are very critical and important. Many times people are too shy to face the facts that are inside their own communities. Let's talk about that people will have a safe place to sleep tonight, that children will not go hungry tonight, and that people will have the skills to meet employment opportunities that exist. People are asking, I want meaningful employment opportunities to them. Everybody has a different definition of what meaning, meaningful employment. But it's going to take local governments and governments' responsibilities to deal with it. It's not just about having good roads or dealing with the bridges, and trust me, at 3,353 kilometers of roadway, 853 bridges, and over 15,000 culverts that deal in this community. It's like little Venice around here because the agriculture, it's like drainage. But it's more than that. It's about creating a social fabric that is so important. It is about investing in humans. It's about human and social investments that are needed in order to make the change. We need to act with new and innovative ways that, are, that seem unrealistic at first, and everything seems unrealistic. But when you put your heart and mind to it, the challenges are opportunities to success. Things are not problems. Problems are only solutions. And that's where we've got to become. It's about making the changes that are required. It's about creating communities that, that everybody has a safe place. That children will go to bed, in a bed, and feel loved each day. It's that people will have the skills and abilities for employment opportunities. You know, Chatham Kent Council has chosen to invest in three key areas. Jobs, people, health, and at, uh, at the same time, creating a financial sustainable way of achieving this. It's about working creatively to support the community where everyone wants to have that meaningful employment opportunity. We work to create a healthy, safe, accessible community with a healthy, a natural, built-in environment that is required in order for people to do it. To achieve success in these areas, jobs and people, we have to partner with others to build a community that we strongly believe in. I wanted to note that the municipal employees here in Chatham-Kent, and you always find it amazing, you're always the first ones to get attacked when budgets come around. But I want to say to you, because uh, in my other part of my address, I'm going to talk about Sam's a bit. But I want to say to my employees, the municipal employees of Chatham-Kent, and I guess it can go beyond that, is that, you know, you challenge each day. It's not just a job. You never know what the next day is going to entail. But I want to compliment you, each of you, and the leadership roles that you play, because you do make a significant difference in lives. But unfortunately, the general public doesn't always get it. But you can't get trapped as a leader in that that rhetoric that actually goes on. It's about supporting and maintaining our employees with continuity, with training, but most importantly is the innovation opportunities that exist in those minds that work with people each day. Because that change is going to create a social fiber network throughout Ontario and throughout my community that is so important. So today is about, and your conference is about making a difference. It's about installing the leadership that is there. And you know, I want to speak on a few areas that I think are so important. Is that first, you need to dare to dream. And others did it in our history, and why can't we? Dare to dream. Second, is to lead. Don't always wait for somebody else. I always find it interesting when others said, Randy, why are you running for provincial politics? Well, I ran in 1990, I was 30 years old, and I wasn't a lawyer or a doctor. I was an auto worker, and they said, you can't make it. 
Well, I made it. And then people said, why are you running for mayor in 2006? You should run for council first. Because I always believed in leadership. Leaderships don't follow. Leaderships lead. Change brings us where we are today. So, you know, it's about you. The people who can influence. The people who deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. It's about bringing back the ideas of a community that we all want. You know, you will be providing advice to the ministry consultation. And I want to talk about SAMS because I sit on three organizations. I sit the head of the Western Wardens. I'm a head of a regional, which is Lumco and Marco. And let me tell you, each of those meetings, and they may, I don't know if it goes back to you, but I'm going to share a little secret which goes on in those rooms. You know, we're very appreciative of the work and the changes that went through Sam. And the work and the due diligence of you, the individuals who are on the front line, and the administrators, of making the process work. But work for the consumer. It added extra hours. It added extra work. And we as leadership have understood what SAMS had done to you. And we've made sure that we're going to continue to move that strive to make the government accountable for what they need to do. So I think it's important. But as we move forward with SAMS, as we deal with long-term care, as we deal with the issue of pro uh, poverty strategies, as well as community hubs, we have to cultivate innovation throughout our communities. And through your conference, you're going to be doing that. Don't be afraid to try something new. I won't go there. I was going to talk about changes when we were, remember when you were younger? Because I'm looking around the room. <laughs> and you're all about the same age as I am, holding 40. I've been holding it for a while. But look at the changes we've gone through in our life. Look at the cell phones we used to have and the cell phones we have today. Just take a look at change and it was through innovation and leadership. So don't say it can't be done, just say how is it going to be done? And we can implement those changes. So over your conference, a couple of objectives, objectives. Number one, think outside the box. Number two, step to the wild zone. And that's during the meetings, not after the meetings. <laughs> Number three is to enjoy yourselves and always remember where Chatham Ken is in the heart of where we believe. Because if it's not the cultural activities, it's the lakes, the lakes. Because as we describe, Chatham Kent is about cultivating growth from shore to shore. I look forward to discussions you're gonna have with the panel tonight, today, especially through the leaders cabinet, which we've been able to bring together the leadership throughout this community to work on a common strategy. I wish you well, I wish you health, but most importantly, I wish you the best success knowing that your local leadership should be standing in support of what you're trying to achieve. Congratulations to all for making time available to participate today. Thank you.